There it is. Hey everyone, welcome to another video. And uh, today's video is a pretty special one. Reason is, I got some parts from Japan. And especially one of the parts that I got is from an actual rally car that participated in rally events in Japan from a uh, Galant VR4. I was pretty excited on this part. Actually, it took several months for it to get to me and it finally arrived. And that's why I'm doing the video today. So yeah, I have uh, Japanese contacts um, that I've had for several years, actually for many years. And I do have a side business page um, on Instagram. Uh, it's called Nostalgic JDM. I will also leave a link to the description of this video if you do want to follow it. But basically, those are parts that I've that are from Japan. Uh, some parts that I've been able to find in local salvage yards or I have may have acquired through some deals. It's not a full-fledged business. It's really a side thing. I don't come up. I don't get a lot of parts on a regular basis. It's just something I do to offer to maybe fellow, um, really, originally as Galan enthusiasts. And obviously now, you know, I have Monteros. So yeah, I've been able to get some of these parts through the years since the early 2000s. Uh, like I said, I originally had a 7th Gen Galant, which I still do. And um, I haven't done a video on it, but I plan to hopefully in the next couple months. But they originally started with that car. I was able to get a few parts off a of Galant VR4 version on uh, off the 7th Gen E54A chassis, which is the, the tall wing, uh, the tail lights. Uh, the headlights mostly body pieces and then when i got the galant vr4 i was able to get a couple of those parts from japan too i did a video uh, a few months ago introducing it so it, it showed some of those parts i have experience and i was able to get jdm parts i've got it for the monteros uh, my gen 2.5 and I'm also acquiring parts for the Gen 1, so and even our Gen 3. So I have experience. I do have contacts. I've lost some through the years, and I've gained some. And I'm, some of them, a couple of them I've kept. And uh, like I said, they're not full-fledged uh, parts finders for me. They kind of do this from a, for a favor. Um, this particular part I've been waiting for for several months. One of my contacts was able to got a hold of me some point last year and said, hey, um, there's a part you might be interested in. It's off of Galant VR4. It's actually participating in some rallies. He asked me if I was interested in a couple parts on it. There were a couple parts that I really wanted. But due to COVID and shipping prices just going off the roof, um, it wasn't just feasible, feasible for me financially to get those parts. But I was able to get a couple of the small parts. Yeah, what I'm going to do is just unbox it with you guys. So when I open it, it's be the first time I see it and you'll be along for the ride. Okay, here it is. This is the box. Yes, I've opened it. I, just to make sure nothing was damaged, especially the part that I really was waiting for. And I did take, take a couple parts, uh, a couple things that came out of it, which was like a brochure for a Pajero. The Galant parts are still in here. I haven't opened it. So here's the box. Let's see what we have here. So first up is the pillow ball upper rear mounts. And let's see what we got here. I can tell you what, Japanese people really know how to package their stuff. So. so these are. Cusco 
rear upper pillow bowl mount mounts for the E39A Blunt VR4 chassis. So that is pretty cool. So these I am not going to use. Um, I will be posting these up for sale on my side business page, Nostalgic JDM. I'm going to clean these up and sell these. Um, obviously, these are rare, very hard to find. These will be up for sale. Let's get to the next item. In the box. A rear strut bar for a Gallant Veer 4. So it's a Pro Spat, Japanese brand. So that is a rear strut or shock brace. This one will also be on sale. The only reason I'm selling the rear Cusco pillow bowl mounts in this is I already have a rear strut tower brace. I have a Cusco. I'm running a whole new suspension on the Gaunt VR4 where I don't need the rear pillow bow mounts. And uh, I'll be doing a video on that when I install it down the road. But yeah, they're in, it's not because I they're in bad condition. It's just I don't need them. So stay tuned for this one. Follow the page. This will be for sale. All right. This is the part I've been waiting for. There it is. This feels like Christmas. Like I said, I love how the Japanese wrap their stuff, man. Look at this. I mean, the attention to detail and how they just wrap stuff, being mindful for the, the new owner buyer is just amazing. And, you can see, and you'll see why once we get this unwrapped. Why well, I appreciate the detail they did to help protect the part from getting damaged. It's a uh... You want to know what this is? This is a carbon fiber cooling plate. Okay, the reason for the cooling plate is for some reason Mitsubishi didn't offer this or made this a factory part on the Gallant VR4, the ones with the turbo, with the obviously the turbocharged 4G63. They only offered it on the diesel models, and it's a cooling plate that sits where the hood latch is. There's right there on the um, core support. There's a space there where the radiator and all that stuff. And this, what this is supposed to do is to help cooling efficiency inside the engine bay. Keep pushing air, the guiding air, to the engine bay to help cooling. Um, like I said, they offered it on the diesels. They just never order, offered it on the uh, 4G63 turbo versions. When this part years ago was still available, it was a sought after part because of its cooling benefits, but it's been no longer available for many years. 
if you're able to find it, you have a unicorn part. This was on a Gallant VR4 rally car. It's carbon fiber. This is a rare part. This is actually off a race car. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to test fit this. So this part goes right here where I was talking about air, I guess, escapes. It reduces the cooling efficiency. So they put this, that part, that cover plate here, so all the air can go right into cooling the radiator and drawing air and cooling the turbo and all that good stuff. Let's get this part here. Figure out how this mounts. That hole there. Let me remove the hood latch. So it doesn't like the hood latch. It's taking up some of the space. So, I mean, I have the hood struts. I was just keeping the hood latch. Let's get this panel piece. Looks like this. But yeah, that's how it sits. So now it's supposed to do what it's supposed to do. I guess now less air is supposed to just come up through the what would be all that open space. Everything lines up. That bolt lines up. Put dampers holes there and then there's this I'm just gonna have to figure out it does not like this here I might have to figure something out to make that fit <laughs> So there you go i cleaned it up a little bit to show you the part um so what i'm going to do is it definitely needs to be redone and to clear uh it shows its age it looks like it was on uh, a rally car or, or it's been used there's a lot of uh, chips a lot of imperfections on the old clear coat um and a lot of the areas so um what i'm going to do is sand it down get it prepped up so i can re-clear it and um, i'm also i have to modify there's a part where there's like a, a tube, I guess it protects the hood latch cable. And I'm going to have to modify that a little bit because it's preventing this plate from sitting flush, especially on the uh, core support. I'd modify that and then get this refinished, re-cleared, and then install it. So on the next video, um, I will be showing the process of prepping the cool carbon fiber cooling plate and applying the new clear coat to it. And uh, that will also serve as like a product review because um, I'm gonna be using uh, an, aerosol, an aerosol canned clear coat. Um, some, of, some of you have probably heard of the Spraymax 2 part 2K clear coat, which is 
the clear coat where you actually you take the piece you, to activate the two part to it but the one thing I didn't like about that was once you use it you got to use the can it becomes once you get that activating agent released that's it uh, if you don't use the can it's all wasted uh, I did find another brand that um, actually what activates the, the two part is when it's exposed to air so once you spray it it activates both agents and the clear coat um, have basically cures about the same time or just as fast as the spray max clear coat so that's what I'm going to use but uh, yeah stay tuned for that um, that will be the next video um, I'm gathering I just need to get the stuff the, the sanding uh, the sandpaper and order the uh, that clear coat then I'll do that video and I'll obviously once it's ready I'll have it released and I'll show you the new cooling plate after it's redone I'm going to show you what I did to modify the metal sleeve that's protecting the hood latch cable. That will be the next video. Hopefully, I'll have that up soon. Please subscribe to the channel and uh, hit that notification button. Hit a like. And, uh, man, feel free to comment. So, till then, to the next video, be safe and drive safe. And I'll see you then. Oh, baby, baby, baby. Oh, baby.